Rub up your engines! MC Cat says, Scotty, in a modern vehicle, if someone were to put a cold air intake and free-flowing exhaust, would the fuel management system dump more fuel, negating any increases in fuel economy? You can't just take off the factory equipment, throw stuff like a cold air intake, different exhausts, without reprogramming the car on any modern car if you want it to really run correctly. There have been all kinds of studies done where they tested them before and after putting the cold air intakes and exhaust and found out that over time they wouldn't run right unless they're reprogrammed. Your computer is measuring stuff with the oxygen sensors and the back pressure and all kinds of stuff. And if you just change it all and the computer doesn't know, it's not going to guess right and a car won't run right. So don't do that. It's a stupid thing to do anyway. Race guys do it. Yeah, and they got guys that program them before the race, every race, to take into consideration the temperature, the humidity, the barometric pressure, the altitude, all kinds of stuff. You can't just bolt on and think it'll run better. Right, old Bob. Honda. Hey Scotty, what do you think of the Honda Civic Type R? Those are excellent screaming little cars. Now they're not giving them away. I guess they're close to 40 grand now. They are a race design Civic with a fast engine. They only come in a standard transmission. I got a customer just bought one I love driving around. He brought it over here to let me drive it around and see what it's like. I was impressed. Now Scotty's a cheapskate. I'd never buy a new one. It costs too much money. I have to wait until they got really old. <laughs> And my Toyotas generally don't break, so I, you know, I got three cars and one person. I have no reason to buy any more, so I probably never will. They're excellent little cars. They handle, they got tons of acceleration, a lot of horsepower, but they are expensive. They're not giving those things away. From what I've seen, they're generally even asking over sticker price at the dealer because they're selling them so fast because people want that type of car, small little zippy race car, that's what they're going to buy. Cheyenne Mirza. Scotty, I have a problem putting my gear in reverse. Sometimes they're a terrible noise, and when I put it in reverse, it takes several tries before it moves. The car's a Suzuki Swift, low mileage. Maybe low mileage, but it's a Suzuki Swift. Suzukis do not make good cars, which is kind of nutty because they make fantastic motorcycles. I had a Suzuki 750. She said thing went 159 miles an hour, started every time, had a great sound, never leaked oil. It's just a great motorcycle. I gave it to my son. Their cars, exact opposite, kind of junky, clunky little things. They don't sell Suzukis in the United States anymore, the cars, because they sold so bad, they pulled out of the United States entirely. Your transmission's going out. You hear a noise and it doesn't move. It's just flat going out. The money it costs to fix one of those things, my advice is, if you can find a used transmission, they're small vehicles, maybe see what a guy will charge to put one in and gamble with a used transmission, but I wouldn't put too much money into that thing. They're not worth anything if you're in the United States. Now, other parts of the world, lots of guys fix them and the parts availability is higher, so you might just have it fixed then if you live in Europe or Australia or something, but in the United States, it's not worth fixing, really. C.O. Henbin says, Scotty, I got a 2002 R S. X. When I let go of the gas after driving it, the car seems to lurch forward. What do you think is the issue? 99% of the time, when you're driving a car and you let go of the accelerator and it lurches, you got an automatic transmission problem that is just catching, and that's what happens. They kind of lurch. It's a sad but true. Now, let's say you got a standard transmission. Well, in that case, if it lurched when you took off in the gas, it could be a problem in your fuel management system where when you take your foot off the gas, it's confused, and it's supposed to let the fuel injectors gradually lose fuel and it might be cutting them off too fast and then turning them back on and it can lurch. Most of the time they do it on those. It's an automated transmission. It's the transmission starting to go out. Now on the other hand, I've had customers with cars like that and they drove them for two, three years more and they still went down the road and they just lived with a little bit of lurch when they took their foot off the gas. So it doesn't necessarily mean you got to rebuild the transmission right away. O-Dog says, are Walmart brand oil and synthetic long mileage filters any good. Sure. You know, Walmart doesn't make anything. They just buy stuff from other people. Uh, there's nothing wrong with buying their synthetic oil. All the oil is sold in the United States has to meet certain standards anyways. When you buy a higher end long mileage filter, Fram actually makes them for them, and the same one is the high end Fram. And the high end Frams are excellent filters. Now, the low end Frams are crappy because they're just cheaply made, low price. There's no arguing that. But Frams have been making oil filters for a long time. They also make high end filters, and they make them for a lot of different colors. 
companies do. And they're all the same because Fram's making them. And if you are going to buy one of those Fram's, do buy the extended one because it's a much better filter than their cheapy ones that are just the normal ones. They're a lot better built. I got a whole video on that you can watch. Radioactive banana says, I don't want a new car. As I can't fix them, maybe my programmer child can. Give me a 65 Pontiac Bonneville is my first car. I love the tanks. Yeah, well, you get something old like that, sure. They're easier to work on. I was working on a customer's car. He had bought a 65 Mustang GT, and yeah, it's a fancy little car. It was a really nice shined up one, but it's simple to fix. It's got a carburetor, bolts on, got a five-speed transmission. They put an aftermarket one in that, but still, it's a standard transmission. Simple to drive, less things to figure out to go wrong, because you're doing the shifting, not computers. So you know, <laughs> if it's not shifting right, either you're not doing it right or you need a new clutch. That's pretty much what goes wrong with them. Real simple mechanical stuff you can easily fix yourself. There's not a bad idea buying something like that. The only real downfall of something like a 68, it's going to get horrible gas much. Those old cars are big heavy tanks and they suck the gas down. There's no arguing that. You're going to get in the teens in town. There's no, or even lower. You might get six miles a gallon if you're driving hard in town. <laughs> RSS Production says, Scotty, I got an 05 Acura MDX, 206,000 miles. Would you recommend using Royal Purple Oil on that old of a vehicle? Well, yeah, it's excellent oil. I know a lot of people that use it for their race cars. Now, the Acura is a pretty high-tech engine, the V6 engine, and those are pretty high-tech engines. Honda makes them. They're excellent engines. And if you don't mind spending that kind of money for the oil, it's kind of overkill, because odds are you're not going to be racing it, and you're not taking it to the high extremes. But especially if you live in a place like Alaska, where it gets real cold or North Dakota. Sure, it's a better oil because it flows better when it's cold outside. In that case, you're better off getting a really good oil like that because it will flow better than a regular oil because it's made for colder and higher temperatures. It's got a longer temperature range than normal oil. Pantera FKOO says, Scotty, my cruise control stopped working in my 93 Accord. What can I do to fix it? Okay, well, it's an old car at least. The old ones were mechanical and vacuum activated. There's vacuum lines that go to it. Sometimes they fall off, rot, and they suck air, and then it's not going to work. And the actuator that's by your throttle, that also is a vacuum solenoid. That could have a tear in the diaphragm, and that would need replacing. Of course, check the fuses, make sure the switch works when you turn it on and off. Now, if it's not that, then it's the module, and they're so expensive, and that thing's so old. And if you really want to cruise control, my advice is go get a guy installing an aftermarket ones. They're not all that expensive, and you can just start from scratch, because that kind of stuff, modules for those on an old Honda, you'd only be able to get it at a Honda dealer if they still sold them, and they would cost a small fortune. For usually 100 bucks, you can get a kit to put a brand new one on the whole system, and just do that rather than try to fix that old thing. Matthew Miller says, Scotty, what are your thoughts about a car made entirely of plastic? <laughs> Well, you know, strangely enough, oh, geez, just like 30 years ago, I was reading Popular Mechanics magazine. Rather ironic, now that I'm like the most popular mechanic. And I'm reading it, and Ford was working on his Pino engine. And they were making the whole thing out of plastic, the pistons, everything. And of course, the thing melted after a while, and all the plastic parts broke. Making a car entirely out of plastic. Not a smart idea. Now, I mean, if we're all going to be riding around in tiny little cars, I guess you could make the bodies and everything out of plastic. They wouldn't weigh much. They'd get better fuel economy or electric cars. Make the bodies out of plastic. And if everybody's driving a small plastic car, it's perfectly fine. But on the other hand, if you got guys driving big semi trucks and F-350 trucks down the road, and you're in this tiny little plastic car, if they run into you, you can kiss your hiney goodbye. So, David Iacino, hey Scotty, I got an 06 Ford Ranger. The AC works on max AC, but not on normal. What's the problem? All right, if you have to turn it on max AC and it blows cold, and you put it on regular AC and it doesn't blow at all, probably you need a new control unit, that switch assembly. What controls it is turn it when it's on regular AC, and also have power when it's on max. If it only has power when it's on max, that generally means that switch assembly is broken. If by any odd chance you mean that it only blows on high speed, but not on any of the lower speeds. That's the blower motor resistor assembly. In that case, you'd buy a new blower motor resistor assembly because when they go bad, you'll lose different speeds, but you'll always have full speed because it bypasses the resistor for full speed. So you might want to check that too.
Jared Keeler says, this guy's got, he doesn't have any clue, he's always repeating himself. Well, the reason I'm repeating myself is because people ask similar questions, so I have to give them the correct answer. The correct answer will be a repeat of one of my previous ones, because I'm telling the truth. Now, if I was a liar, I'd be giving different answers to the same question all the time, but I'm repeating myself because I'm giving you the correct answer over and over and over again, so people will understand what the truth is and not make up lies every time something's going on. <laughs> Yes, telling the truth could be boring after a while if you keep telling the truth. Maybe that's why people lie all the time in our society. They're bored, so they just decide to lie to make things a little spicier and make a little more action. But me, I'm old fashioned. I just tell the truth all the time. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.